Point Park University, right downtown in the heart of Pittsburgh. A beautiful city where determination and creativity collide to form art, defined in the dictionary as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination. And that's something that Point Park offers by encouraging students to do great things, showing them how to put hard work and persistence together to make dreams no longer just a vision or a sleep, but a vision for the future, a vision that will be their life. There is so much talent at this university, and we want to focus on that talent. Welcome to In Focus. Hello, and we're back on In Focus. We're here with Sean Hilverding. Uh, Sean, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm doing just fine, just fine. So how did you get on this show? You know, how did, how did our producers, you know, get you to get on the show? Because I know this isn't something that you would normally uh, go about doing. Um, the producers, they came up to me and they asked me if I would uh, do a little show for uh, answer some questions about farming since uh, we do kind of live in the big city right now. So it's kind of it's kind of a good option, really. Uh, it's kind of get people interested and kind of get people to know knowledge about farming that's out there. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Um, you So you said something very interesting there um, about the difference, the contrast between the farm life and the city life. Now, when you first came here to Point Park, I'd like to know how different that was for you and sort of maybe some of the struggles that you went through. Um, the, the major difference was definitely going from the middle of nowhere, really. I mean, I right. don't have a lot of people live around me, and if they, there are a lot of people, they're just mostly like small family farms. So it was kind of interesting. It was a very um, big lifetime change for me, mm -hmm. um, especially I wasn't used to fire trucks and ambulances. That, you know, midnight or <laughs> hearing lots of cars and rush hour traffic that backed up for like eight miles long. So it was it was a very right. interesting um, interesting transition for me. It's, uh, it took me probably a year to really get used to it before I really started to like it. Right, right. I know um, from personal experience that uh, it definitely was is can be a culture shock in many ways and uh, very contrasting. If you haven't lived in a city before, then there's nothing else like it previous to that. Um, so wait, you said you were from the middle of nowhere. Where is the middle of nowhere? <laughs> uh, I live in Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. It's about an hour and 10 minutes south of here. But then I don't live directly in Waynesburg. I live about 40 minutes outside of the small town of Waynesburg on a small about 150 acre family farm. So it's pretty much the middle of nowhere because most people can't even find it if you ask them <laughs> to find Sprags on a map. So. <laughs> right. Sprags is the name of, yes. that's the, the specific name. Um, so now you said that the environment is different, but how are the people different comparatively to out there to here in the city? Do they smell different? I want to know about the uh, smell. <laughs> the people, <laughs> um, there's really no smell difference. Um, really? But the, one of the big differences, um, the people in the city are just like, they're rush, rush, rush all the time. There's really yeah, no relaxation. <laughs> they got to get somewhere in a hurry. And, you know, you got buses that got to, you know, run on schedule and they don't <laughs> like to get behind. And mm, on the farm, it's, you know, it's just relaxed. It's peaceful. But um, again, I don't believe you. I, you get up at <laughs> 6 a.m. every day and you say, uh, we, before this interview, we were out there and I asked you why you got up at 6 a.m. And you're like, I have to feed the cows. Hey. What? And I'm like, <laughs> I know you were joking, but <laughs> I don't believe that people are just lackadaisical where you're from. Um, they get up at six and they're right in the fields doing whatever they I do. I want to say that it's probably because they have jobs to do. Like they have to take care of all those um, animals that they have in their farm, right? Because right. do you have, what type of animals? Do you have animals in your farm? Yes, sir. Like what type of animals do you have in the farm? Uh, we raise uh, Scottish Island beef cows. They uh, originated here from the uh, 1500s from Scotland. Um, oh, wow. The oldest breed actually <laughs> in the United States. They um, are the only breed that's never been genetically altered. Um, every wow. other breed, and that's a whole different topic that I could really go into in-depth information on the difference between them and what people are used to eating in the world or what you buy in the supermarket. Um, the breed itself has its own unique label for itself in Scotland. They don't really have it here because the U.S. and Department of Agriculture has mostly marketed what I'm going to consider Black Angus um, to an extreme in-depth 
view and it basically they came to the point if the cow was black it was considered black angus even if it actually wasn't and the cow black angus when it first originated here from the other side more like let's go back to western civilization times they were very short they weren't very tall um, and through breeding genetics things like that they've become very big they uh, boost them up with steroids antibiotics and with the beef we raise as well as um, other farmers that raise Scottish Highlands as well, you are, by law, you have signed contracts, you're not allowed to do that to them. So it's kind of a very good breed. It's the healthiest breed out there. So wow. Wow. it's worth the money that you will pay if you buy properly. Most farmers raise them grass-fed. It's about $6 a pound on the hoof, but it's very well worth it. You definitely get what you pay for. Wow. <laughs> that is a plethora of information. That the fact I, that it could go into like, specifically the di like times when the cattle came in here and uh, yeah. You <laughs> should teach a class on, on... I think he's qualified. Wow. My mind is a little blown. There was so much information there that I now I don't even know how to comment. That is a lot. So, but I do have to say, don't, do you have just cows or are there more animals? Uh, we mostly raise just cows. Um, just cows. We also have 12 chickens. Um, 12 chickens. Now, yep. do, you, do you eat the eggs right up off the ground? <laughs> or do you sell the eggs? No, we, uh, my mother mostly takes care of the chickens. They're okay. kind of like her, her babies. Okay. She, it's actually a funny story of that. She said she never wanted chickens. Well, we got her chickens and she fell in love with them. And mm. she would kill her own son if I heard her chickens. So, oh, right. just saying. Wow. But uh, no, she gathers them, keeps them in the fridge, and she does sell them to... Uh, teachers at school because she does work for oh. the school district so oh so you're working the you're working the money angles there for the teachers. Hey, farm's all about money in today's I world like it. now and so yeah exactly let's talk about the business aspect of it so these cows that you raise um, do you do you use them for milk or are they purely beef cows uh, purely beef um, now back in the Earlier times, like 1500s, over in Scotland, people would use them for beef and milk as well. Okay. And an actually funny story, they used to keep them in their houses with them. Really? Then. So You don't do that, though? No, I do Have not. Have you do ever that. done that before? Yes. Actually, recently, last Let's year, we had that. one in the house. It was a very funny story. I wasn't home, but uh, Mama decided to have her baby a couple months late. For some oh, odd wow. reason, we don't really know why, but uh, he was born in the middle of February when it was like, zero degrees outside okay. and he ended up getting frozen to the ground on accident because mama uh, kind of pushed him off into the, like the muddier part of the field and um, he ended up coming in the house for a couple hours getting warmed up from the fireplace. The baby? Yeah, the baby. Wow. Laid there with the dog and everything. Was, oh my god, that had to be the cutest thing ever. Tell me you had a picture of that. I do have pictures you of that. You have pictures of that? Incident? We actually do. We have to put those up somewhere if we can do that we have to put those images up i don't know if we have the capabilities of doing that but we, we are can get the graphics up in here we have to get a picture of a cow with a dog um yeah wow that's awesome then we had to baby feed him for about three months three months so wow okay so here at point park you are also in the cross country team right so the when did you start running what's the is that uh, the only thing you could do in over there in the middle of nowhere? probably the only thing i was good at um <laughs> no back in elementary uh there was a gym teacher who told me that i should uh, try it so i tried out for the track team in middle school and then ended up doing cross country in high school and then kind of got good at it really focused on it and mm -hmm. um here i am today wow that's that's really good. I mean, uh, we, it, we let's not pretend that we don't know. We're all on the. We are all on the. <laughs> we don't have to plug that in. <laughs> so we're about to uh, go to practice right after this. But yeah, absolutely, that's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. I think that it's game time. Personally, that's just my opinion. <laughs> but it's game time. So let's bring this one in a little bit closer, please. Yeah, come on. Let's, let's this producer, don't on. tell me anything. Come on. come on, come on. Okay, let's get up right in here and close so that way we can see our fingers. So we're going to play a game. Um, most people call it sticks. I don't know if you guys have ever played this before. Real quick, it's a simple game. You're just going to hold out two fingers. Okay, so now one of us is going to start. And basically what's going to happen is the device, for example, hit your hand here. You're going to hold out two because now I just added one. So it's kind of an addition game. So, and then it would be your turn. 
and then you could hit one of my hands and add on, and then you keep going, and um, whoever gets to five, that hand is now dead, and you have to put it behind your back. So the goal is to eliminate other players. When you get to five, you're done. So I'll start here, and I'll just go. This, so this is how. So now you. I didn't have. I don't. I didn't have a childhood. I don't know how to play this game. Well, that's <laughs> totally fine. Now you could hit with either that two or with that one, and you could hit either of us. Sure, Dan. Okay. So now I have a three. So now I could give. Sean, four. And now, let's see what's right. Ah, and see, now he went right through the throw and knocked me out. Um, now it is, however, my turn, and I am going to go ahead and do this. Okay. That other hand, far, far, far away. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm Okay, boom, ah! You played my trap card because I should tell you. Here on the Pioneer sideline, we talk a lot about sports in the studio, but it's beforehand when the conversation is actually interesting. I hope I have enough powder on. I don't want to be too shiny on camera. No, Trevor, I think it looks good every week you pull it off. Ah, uh, thanks, Phil. Man, your hair looks great tonight, by the way. You sure? Yeah, I mean, I got a new haircut, but it looks all right. Hey, hey guys. Does this make me look fat? No. No, 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 no,
representative and kind of lead the way for people. Oh, wait. It seems as if we have a... Time is up. Oh, oh, it seems like, um, it seems like we're out of time. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much. But thank you so much, Sean, for um, being on the show with us. Um, it seems as if uh, I was having a little bit too much fun with uh, our game time. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in to In Focus on this uh, second episode. And uh, we we'll hope that you come back and uh, see us another time with our interesting uh, interviews. Thank you. <laughs>